I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Robbie, a couple of MSNBC panelists were dumbstruck when confronted with new polling of independent voters this week, and it is not looking good for Joe Biden. Let's watch the moment unfold. Another thing interesting in this polling was more independents said that they worry about President Biden weakening democracy than Trump, 53 percent to 42 percent. What do you make of this? I find it shocking, honestly. I, I, I can't I can't, you know, make sense of that number. I wish I could. I wish I had some really great insight to it. But it, I, I don't know if it's an outlier or not, because the other numbers with independence and Biden are going in the right direction. So that may it be it. But also, just one thing I want to add on to what Basil said. You know, this trial's not on TV. You guys do a great job reporting what's happening. But if there aren't those images coming out of the courthouse, people feel like they know this story. We kind of we've heard about it for a long time. So it doesn't surprise me that they're not interested. According to new reporting from Axios, neither President Biden nor his advisors actually believe the bad polling is true. That's right, they think it's all a bunch of malarkey and that the momentum is really behind Joe. So Robbie, the voters just don't get it. They must be stupid, right? They must not understand it. And then I couldn't understand if she was saying they're, they, they're not familiar with the trial because they can't see what's going on or they're overly familiar with it. Now, of course, democracy, if we assume we're talking about the trial going on right now, which doesn't have anything to do with democracy. I mean, it's a campaign finance violation he might be guilty of. Um, look, Talking heads on mains, in mainstream media just keep being frustrated by the fact that the ordinary people do not like the policies they've gotten from Joe Biden for the last four years. They don't like the state of the economy. They are concerned about immigration. They are just not persuaded. They're not blown away by this argument that is so popular at liberal media TV stations and nowhere else that Trump is this unique threat to democracy and thus you must oppose him even if you... Uh, even if there are other issues you have with the current administration. Yeah, and this poll is consistent with past polls on how voters view the issue of quote unquote democracy. I mean, first of all, it's such a vague term that it's not even really useful to ask people who they trust more to handle it because obviously right and left wing voters have different interpretations of what exactly that means. But there was a, a previous poll, I think it was New York Times or maybe it was NBC News that had asked voters about who they trusted more on specific issues back in January or February. And it was the same thing where democracy was maybe like the fourth or fifth most important issue to voters behind things like the economy, inflation, immigration. And they were pretty split on who they trusted more <laughs> to deliver on the issue of democracy. I mean, it's possible that the Democrats have undermined their standing or their position with respect to the democracy question when I, I'm sure there are a lot of voters out there saying, wait, wait a minute, certain democratic uh, uh, municipalities, judges, local officials have tried to keep Trump off the ballot and now are bringing all of these you know, cases against him with, with perhaps with the effect of trying to you know, bar you from voting for him in the case of not having him on the ballot and then, you know, so sour the mood of the country against him in some of these other cases. And I'm not saying those cases have no legitimacy and Trump didn't do this to himself in uh, certain regards with some of the legal matters he's facing, but I think it might make the democracy question a bit muddled. Um, you know, do the, does the Democratic Party actually trust the people to make this determination. It's clear that the pundits certainly don't. Now, perhaps the White House, though, is full steam ahead, all hunky-dory. They're not seeing any problem. They're just, they just don't believe the polling. Um, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Indeed, let's see if it pays off. I mean, <laughs> and this is one of their, the main components of the Biden campaign is painting Trump as a fascist. There's been all of these major media features over the past couple of months about how Trump is the new Hitler. He's gonna be an authoritarian. And in addition to these lawfare cases that you're talking about, there's also some some stories about the Biden DOJ actually going after not just Trump, but conservative Americans, where they've uh, indicted several pro-life activists under the FACE Act, uh, accusing them of blocking access to abortion clinics, literally raiding the home of a, a dad with like five kids and you know in front of his toddlers and, and hauling him away because he protected his son from like a crazy pro-choicer who was pushing him or whatever. And then there was the case where the 
FBI sent out this memo targeting traditional Catholic churches and asking FBI agents to infiltrate them because they were more apt to be domestic terrorists. There was the FBI accepting that school board association letter where they accused parents who were going to these school board meetings of threatening school board officials and also being potentially domestic terrorists. So it's beyond even Trump at this point, the scope of how the Biden administration has weaponized the Department of Justice has gone to everyday Americans. And I think people are are aware my, of that. My worry about those issues is that Trump, if he does return to office, will not actually do a thing about them, right? Those are things going on. I mean, that's he rails against the deep state, but he was president and there was, you know, during his, his term in office, was there a vast ramping down of the bureaucratic state, the administrative state? Did we return um, uh, the, the stewardship of this country to the actual elected representatives in keeping with what the confines of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights were? No, not really. Maybe, maybe there's a dent in that direction. There's still, it's still ruled by these tremendous bureaucracies. And uh, that's really my, my fear with Trump. Not that he'll, he'll get in and, you know, start firing a bunch of federal employees. Oh, oh no, not that. But it, it's, it's just, it's about him. It's the Trump show. And so, some of these legitimate um, issues you're bringing up actually don't get dealt with because people are just so distracted by the man himself. Yeah, and I hope that he does hold firm to his promise to actually change some of the federal rules this time around to get rid of a lot of these civil servants. Would have been that, great to do it the first time. I know. There were a lot of things that would have been great to do the first time, but it is funny to watch, you know, in this recent Time Magazine long form interview that he did, um, one of the things they were freaking out about was how he was going to get rid of federal employees, and that is another uh, piece of their evidence that he's going to rule as a fascist, which is hysterical, like actually returning more power to elected representatives and the people is somehow fascistic. I mean, it's obviously just completely backwards right. from a logical right. stance. Fascism is when the elected representatives actually make the policies and then are accountable to the democratic process. I, I, I must have missed that. I must be confused somewhere. <laughs> you, you must be. <laughs> All right, we'll have more free media right after this.